Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. Today's video will be yet another countdown, but not from a specific band or artist, but of artists and bands that hail from the land of Canada. At the time of this recording, today is July 1st, Canada Day, and for those of you who don't know, I am Canadian. I thought I would do a top 10 of my own personal favorite Canadian bands. Some of these might be a shock, maybe you didn't know they were Canadian, but I would love to see your top 10 favorite Canadian bands in the comments below. Enjoy the list. So at number 10, we have Our Lady Peace. In my teenage years, I listened to a lot of local radio stations that played alternative and rock music from the 90s, 2000s, and current, and one of the bands that played a lot was Our Lady Peace, because fun fact, radio stations in Canada are required to play a certain amount of Canadian music because it's the law. Don't ask me why, I don't know. The songs I would hear all the time were Clumsy, Superman's Dead, and Innocent. In fact, their highly acclaimed album, Clumsy, came out the same week I was born. The thing I love about Our Lady Peace is their signature grungy alternative sound with the nasally vocals that are definitely an acquired taste. I would definitely understand if they weren't for you. I, I understand. The band is still going strong and making music to this day and is still recognized as one of the Canadian greats. A band that's been around for a while but didn't really blow up big until the 2010s, I have Death From Above 1979. This Canadian duo just consists of Jesse on bass and keyboards and Sebastian on lead vocals and drums. It wasn't until the physical world in 2014 when these guys caught my attention and I just love the heavy distorted noise coming just from these two. They have a great noisy punk hard rock energy. I've heard their songs venture outside of Canada by having their songs selected in movies and TV episodes, so I'm happy they're getting their recognition they deserve. Also, if a drummer can sing lead vocals and play at the same time, I know that's not easy at all, so that's a huge plus in my book. Number 8 is a little band you might have heard of before, and that's Metric. Metric are an indie rock band that made some stellar albums throughout the years like Fantasies, Synthetica, and Art of Doubt. I've heard their songs on the radio before, but it wasn't until they used their song Black Sheep in one of my favorite movies, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, where I really went back to check out Metric. Once I saw that in the movie, I just loved the structure and the badass energy that song brings. These guys kill live, and without trying to brag, I actually got to meet Metric, and they were very sincere people. With Emily's iconic voice and the new wave style instruments backing her up, it's no wonder people around the world come back to Metric. Number 7 is a band that's growing slowly in the pop punk scene and that is Pup. If you didn't see my video I did a while back on my favorite bands of the 2010s, spoiler alert, Pup is on there. I really love the band's chaotic sound and the loud shouting vocals. The band's third album, Morbid Stuff, made me fall in love with the group with its catchy as hell songs and their distinct morbid lyrics about destruction and love. Pup is like a tornado on the loose destroying everything in its path, but it's something you watch and admire and give its full attention. This band shouldn't be slept on and you need to look up Pup if you haven't. One of the first bands that I fell in love with was Three Days Grace, so I felt like I should save a spot for these guys. Forming in Toronto in the early 1990s under the name Groundswell, the band changed their name to Three Days Grace in 1997 and released their first album in 2003 and became a huge band. The thing that drew me to this group were its heavy riffs, slamming drums, and the emotional and tortured lyrics and Adam's razor sharp vocals. From their self-titled debut to One X and Life Starts Now, I consider that a perfect three album run, and I enjoy my time with Transit of Venus, their last album with Adam Gontier. 
There was a short time where I enjoyed the new material with their new singer Matt, but I found their sound got super stale really fast and the next records got worse and worse. I still have a special place in my heart for the first three albums and the band will always will too and they'll still always be one of my favorites. At number 5 I have the Tragically Hip and this is a band I don't hear anyone outside of Canada talk about and in Canada we consider these guys legendary. Their music plays all the time and I don't blame them. The band had so many great hits from many great albums. The band formed in 1984 and they continued to rock the country until 2017 when we sadly lost lead vocalist Gord Downey to a terminal brain tumor. They had one final tour and broadcast their final show and all of Canada watched it like it was the Olympics. If you're outside of Canada and you haven't heard of the Tragically Hit, please give them a listen. Their alternative folk rock sound with catchy melodies and irresistible sing-along choruses make this band worth your attention. Now here's a band you've definitely heard of if you're in the metal community. Spirit Box is a trio consisting of vocalist Courtney LaPlante, her husband Mike Stringer, and drummer Zev Rosenberg. The band just recently became a four-piece after hiring ex As I Lay Dying bassist Josh Gilbert. The band took the metal community by storm. I feel like it won't be very long till we see them reach the status of some bands like A Day to Remember or Bring Me the Horizon. What I love about them are their catchy riffs, eye-opening choruses, and breakdowns that take from the book from bands like Gojira and the relentless screams from Courtney. The band's debut album, Eternal Blue, was my favorite album of that year and it just caught me by surprise. The internet's going crazy over them and it makes me happy knowing they're actually a local band from my area. Lots of people in the community and other metal bands are trying to get this band out there and I'm with them. Listen to Spirit Box. Billy Talent are another band that's pretty well known if you're within the punk community. I was first introduced to Billy Talent when I heard the songs Fallen Leaves and Try Honesty, and I remember grabbing their greatest hit CD from a Walmart back in the day. And I have these great memories of going on a road trip with my family and my brother and I listening to their greatest hits and after an hour or so he goes, can we listen to that album again? That's how good Billy Talent are. It's not just their singles, a lot of their deep cuts are fantastic. Ian is one of the most underrated guitarists in punk. I've tried to play some of their songs and some of the chords he plays are just so tricky. His playing can get overlooked easily if you're not paying attention and I love the energy coming from Ben. His vocals are definitely an acquired taste, but once you get settled in or already are from the start, there's no going back. Billy Talent are always a band that'll stick with you, in my personal opinion. Another one of my favorite bands breaking up in 2023. Great. Some Pretty One are one of the most recognized and beloved pop punk bands from the early 2000s. If you've never heard of them, it just takes a small snippet of Fat Lip or In Too Deep to go, oh yeah, these guys. Derek Wibley's distinct vocals and catchy melodies and the band's fun summer sound with a hint of gnarly metal moments are why the band gets love and even to this day in 2023. You never see an early 2000s band like this still go strong to this day and still put out consistent quality. The band's guitarist Brown Sound is seriously one of the best guitarists in that scene. To call him a good guitar player would be an absolute understatement. He made the best riffs, solos, and breakdowns with Derek. As I've said before, the band's catalog is super consistent. They kicked the door down with their first EP, Half Hour of Power, and their debut, All Killer No Filler, and they have put out amazing material since. They have never put out a bad or even an okay record. Some 41, you are one of the greats and I'm gonna miss you a lot, but at least we have a great catalog of albums to look back on.
I don't think this number one should be a shock to anyone. Number one is obviously Rush. Not only one of the best bands in Canada, but one of the best bands in the world. When people think of a trio in music, Rush is definitely one of the first bands thought of. They're one of the most influential bands since the early 1970s, all because of Geddy Lee's cryptic lyrics and stellar bass work, Alex Lifeson's iconic riffs and astonishing solos, and the legendary Neil Peart's technical drum work. There will never be a drummer like him, and he could never be replicated. There's amazing drummers out there who could never follow along to his playing. Neil was an absolute legend. Everybody's got songs and albums they love from the band, like Moving Pictures, 2112, A Farewell to Kings, Hemispheres, Permanent Waves, and so on. My biggest regret in life is not seeing Rush in concert sooner, because now that Neil Peart's passed away, it's super unlikely we'll ever see the band play again or make music. I wish them a happy retirement, and Rush will go down in history as one of the greatest rock bands of all time. And that concludes my list. Happy Canada Day to all the fellow Canadians out there, and to everyone else, who's your favorite Canadian band or artist? Let me know in the comments, and while you're down there, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Take care everyone.